GAB in Tabor City, North Carolina. Time now for Jesus Painted All Ministries with Evangelist George Bastide. Over to you, Brother George. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Jesus Paid It All radio program. I am uh, George Vastine. It's great to be back with you. I took last week off. Of course, they played a CD here for uh, those folks in the area. And we played a little rerun there for our folks that would watch on YouTube if they were interested in watching it. Uh, we had Friend and Family Day at our church at Little River Community Church last week. We had 65 folks came out and had... Uh, a great service, had um, a dinner with us there, and uh, then our family, our children and grandchildren stayed all week, and they just left this morning to go back to Ohio. We had a great time with them. My wife and I took a vacation as well, and we just uh, stayed around the Myrtle Beach area, but we had a great time with them. But we're back to work, as Roy Rogers would say, um, and uh, his, uh, um, the, uh, um, Dale Evans and Roy Rogers, happy trails. We said happy trails to the kids this morning as they left and went on their way. And then here we are, uh, ready to go again this evening. I told my wife this morning when we were leaving, uh, getting ready to do our service at Eagle Crest, I said, let's act like we've done this before. So <laughs> uh, we will send the program out to all those folks that listen. We'll send it out to... Um, um, our family, especially if they would get to watch or listen to this, and it was great to to be with them and send it out to our kids and to our grandkids. I saw two little feet walking in my footsteps. I heard a little voice asking things. I didn't know I touched some tiny fingers and I reached out for direction If she's gone, follow me I need to know just where I'll go If she's following then, Lord, I need to follow you. If I'm a living example, I need a whole lot of your life. If the steps I take will influence her forever,
be an example. I need a whole lot of your life. If the steps I take will influence her forever, I can't afford to lose. Lord, help me make it right. I can't afford to lose. Lord, help me make it right. see here I had this song on my mind um, I'll send this out to uh, to the Duck Run Community Church to my mother um, Betty um, back there in Lucasville Ohio send it out to uh, Curtis and Wilma Jones and all the folks that attend the church there pray that it be a blessing to them send it out also to Shannon McMillan got a message from him this past week and it was good to hear from him send it out to him as well with the uh, 40th anniversary, I believe it was, of the passing of Elvis Presley this past week, I think on the 16th, we uh, there's a song that I've sang for years, and it's so easy to go online and get the second verse. Maybe there's a third verse, I don't know, but all I know is the first one, so I'm going to sing it for you today. You may ask me how I know my God. may doubt the things I say and doubt the way I feel, but I know he's real today, he'll always be, I can feel his hand in mine, and that's enough. If I fall, I know he'll understand Till the day he tells me why He loves me so I can feel his hand in mine That's all I need to know song out to uh, to the young man that was just in here too, to Brother Austin Long, and uh, praying for him, that God blesses there at the church where he is. Uh, like uh, his statement, the beauty of the gospel is that there is forgiveness uh, for sin, and yes, there is forgiveness, and we're thankful for that. All right, let's see here. We'll send this song out to, uh, to Miss Joyce Phipps and to Gary Bratcher today. We'll send it out to them. And uh, pray that if they're listening, it'll be a blessing to them. <clears throat> Haven't sang it for a while, but uh, let's see if we can give it a shot. He never said there never be hard days. No, he never.
never said the path was narrow, but his eyes see the sparrow when it falls. He never said there never be times you'd spend Satan can't hold enough to turn back on him. Now some may not hear it, and others may fear it, and many one more song out to uh, if they would happen to watch this to Peggy and Charlie Newman send it out to them to Roger and LaJonna Throckmorton send it out to them to uh, to Gary and Patty Nichols send it out to them Kathy McChesney send it out to her I saw uh, uh, something earlier where some folks were talking about this song and they enjoyed it and so we'll send it out to them if they're listening Farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was headed for vacation, one for higher education, and two of them were searching for lost souls. That driver never ever saw the stop sign And eighteen-wheelers can't stop on a dime There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Why the 
there's not four of them Heaven only knows I guess it's not what you take When you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go That farmer left a harvest Faith and love for growing things in his young son's heart. And that teacher left her wisdom and the minds of lots of children and did her best to give them all a better start. That preacher whispered, Can't you see the promised land? As he lay his blood stained Bible in that hooker's hand. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. I guess it's not what you take. When you leave this world behind you, it's what you leave behind you when you go. That's the story that our preacher told last Sunday. As he held that blood-stained Bible up for all of us to see, he said, bless the farmer and the teacher and the preacher who gave this Bible to my mama who read it to me there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway why there's not four of them now I guess we know not what you take when you leave this world behind you it's what you leave behind you when you go there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway all right let's take time to get into the word of god today and um, if you would like to read with me, I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew. I have a, uh, a portion of scripture here that I would like to read. One of the big things on uh, people's mind, of course, today and tomorrow is uh, the uh, solar eclipse that is going to be taking place. And somebody asked me here a while back um, why there weren't more churches that seemingly were having watch parties for this or people... Uh, just a great way to witness to people to let them know about the coming of the Lord. And uh, I would say to you that I believe the Lord is coming back. Uh, do I think it will be tomorrow? I think it will be tonight for some people. I think it will be tomorrow for some people. It could be tomorrow for his church, but it's going to be for somebody. I will tell you that. Uh, when will he come? I do not know, but uh, I'm going to read to you uh, first just a little verse from the book of Revelation in chapter 6 of Revelation in verse 12 it says John's writing says I be beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood um, if you uh, are a uh, prophecy individual who likes Bible prophecy um, you will probably remember just shortly it's been that a lot of books and a lot of uh, things were written and videos were produced about the blood moon the blood moons and um, there's no doubt a lot of biblical conversation going on uh, within the last month or so with what will happen tomorrow with the eclipse and some folks would say that it is speaking of this time I'm not going to try to debunk anything. Uh, I, that, I, like I said, I know when the Lord comes back, we need to be ready. 
I spoke to our church this morning about us not living in fear of what is going to happen and how Paul told those in um, uh, Thessalonica when he spoke in 1 Thessalonians, he said that it is not going to overtake us as a thief in the night um, because we are children of the king and we are uh, prepared when he does come. And so uh, we don't have to fear that. But do I think that... Um, the time is getting closer for the Lord to come back? Absolutely. Um, somebody said, I was reading an article of some Christian leader who said that uh, the one thing that they've learned through this whole study of the solar eclipse and the moon turning black and all this that they've read in the Word of God, the one thing that it tells them is just another sign that we are living in the last days. Well, I would like to say I don't think I needed that sign to know that we are living in the last days. If you just look around you, you can see. And that's what I'm going to speak to you about this evening. Uh, in the book of Matthew in chapter 16, and verse 1 says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting him, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them there and departed. I just wanted to touch on that just for a minute. Now, uh, there could be a lot of controversy because of this. A lot of people have their opinions of, of what will happen. I know living where we live is different than the folks that may be watching us uh, will watch this uh, on YouTube. And so there is a difference. There's a difference in um, traffic, no doubt, uh, in this area now because of what is going to happen tomorrow and the people that are wanting to get a good uh, visual of this solar eclipse. But uh, let me say this to you. If you are an individual that believes you have to have a sign like this to prove that we're living in the last days, then Jesus would have called you a hypocrite. He would say to you, can you not look at the sky and say today it's going to be a rough day because of, uh, if you remember... Um, there was a uh, thing my dad used to say to me when I was younger, red sky at morning, sailor take warning, red sky at night, sailor's delight. And uh, when he would say that, I would always try to make sure I never mixed it up. But when I got older and read what Jesus is saying to these folks here in the Word of God, he's saying the same thing to them. He's saying, you can look at the sky and tell me if you think that it's going to rain or it's going to be fair weather or if it's going to be foul weather, but you can't look around and and see the signs that are all about you? Folks, I'm going to say to you, it's more than a solar eclipse that will happen tomorrow. You can look at the things that are happening in this nation that we live in and in this world that God has made and see that we are, yes, of course, living in the final days, what I believe to be the last days. Now, there are going to be prophecies fulfilled, and this is going to be one of the main prophecies fulfilled today as I speak this on the air and as it's played this evening somewhere in somebody's home, if they make it through the scene, Singing, if they don't only just listen to the singing, but if they listen to me preaching too, I guarantee you somebody will cause this prophecy to come true. Peter said there will be those in the last days that will say, where is the sign of his coming? Where is the appearing of his uh, coming? Where is it at? We've heard it since our fathers fell asleep, but we've not seen it yet. Why is that? And because it hasn't happened and people just keep hanging their hat way on out there that it's going to happen sometime, happen sometime. But you know, for some people, from the time we came on this radio program tonight at 530, some people have already went out to meet the Lord. You may be looking for signs. You may be looking for, are we living in the last days? And I'm saying to you, open your eyes. We may not be here, each and every one of us that are listening to me now, and I may not be here when the Lord comes to get his church and to take us home, but either way, we're closer to home than we were yesterday. We're closer to that time when the Lord will take us from here and receive us to glory. And for those of us that are believers in Christ, that have given our lives to him, that accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, there is no need that we should fear. God is not the author of fear. God is not the 
author of confusion. Who brings that on? Satan does. And even for people who are believers and followers of Jesus Christ, Satan would love to have you so baffled over what's happening tomorrow, so spooked. Let me tell you something. You can't spook someone into loving somebody. They're either going to do it or they're not. Do I believe that we need to preach about heaven and we need to preach about hell and we need to preach against sin? Yes, I do. And if you're preaching about hell and somebody gets scared and they only come and pray because they were scared of that, that's one thing. That may lead to a heart knowledge after a while. But folks, a head knowledge, a fear, isn't going to be something that keeps you walking with the Lord. It's going to be the peace that comes, the peace that passes all understanding that comes to us after we receive Christ. When these folks came to him, tempting him, they desired that he would show them a sign from heaven. And Jesus said to them, there's not going to be any sign given to you other than this, the sign of Jonas the prophet. Now what would that be? Jesus is going to, at this time, die and to be put in a tomb, and in three days he will resurrect. And he is referring to Jonah, the prophet Jonah, as he was told by God to go down to Nineveh, and he said, okay, sir, yes, sir, and he went the opposite way and paid the fare thereof and got on the boat, and in the middle of the storm they cast him overboard, and God prepared this great fish of this well to come and swallow him and took him down to the depths of the sea, and the seaweed was wrapped around his head, and he began to cry out to God. If you'll get me out of here, I will keep what I have vowed to you. And God did. He spoke to the whale, to the fish, and it vomited him up on dry ground, and he hit the ground running. He stunk a lot more, no doubt, but he hit the ground running, ready to do what God had called him to do. Now, not totally um, with his whole heart, but he was going to go make sure he would get his part done. But that was a three-day trip for him. Three days in the belly of that whale, and Jesus said, You want a sign? Here's the sign. Here's the sign from heaven. The Son of Man is going to be crucified. He's going to be laid in the tomb, and on the third day he will raise again. Do you think they wanted to hear that? They didn't want to hear that. Even his disciples didn't fully understand what he was saying. And we cannot boast. We wouldn't have understood it either, folks. We have scholars. We have the Word of God. We look at it. We read it. We can see from the front to the back, and we think, Okay, we've got a handle on all of this. Here these folks were walking with him. He was talking to them and they did not fully understand and did not fully perceive what he was talking about at times. Now my prayer is I hope you're not spooked over what will happen tomorrow. My lands, I hope you stay safe. I was talking to Mr. Gore here, and he was talking about the glasses, and people are going to go out, and they're going to view this. And, and my prayer is, is that you haven't bought a wrong set, a bad set. You don't do something to harm your eyes. But I will say to this, I like what a friend of mine said on his uh, uh, Facebook account. He said, the people are waiting to watch the eclipse. And he said, they're looking for the eclipse, and I'm looking for the maker of the eclipse. And folks, today I'm saying to you that if you will look to Christ, you can be saved. We don't have to worry about the signs of the times or what is going to happen. We know that this world is going to come crashing down one day. But we are not the children of wrath. There is no need for us as believers, no need for us as Christians to be so concerned that something is going to happen to us and, and we're going to be destroyed. God is not going to pass His wrath on His children, but on the children of disobedience. Will those times come? Yes, they will. When will they be here? I don't have a clue. I said to the folks just this morning at our church and last week when I was talking, but I remember uh, 2000 when the time was rolling from 1999, December 31st, and the clock was coming to midnight. I remember people saying the computers would crash, different things would happen, and they were hoarding up food, and they were doing everything they could do. And guess what? When uh, midnight came, the ball in New York dropped. The people had a great time, and some of them went home drunk with headaches the next day. I was in church. Me my family. We preached that night, went home the next day, got up and went about life just like we always do. Does that mean that something isn't going to happen someday? No. That, that just means that life is life. You cannot always look at things that are happening around you and saying, okay, the Lord's coming back right now. But my prayer would be that you would look and have enough common sense and the Holy Spirit would deal with you enough on this to know, take today Use it like it is a total gift from God. If you don't have tomorrow, don't say, I wish I would have done this for the Lord. Do it today. 
Don't fear what comes tomorrow. Don't. God is not a God of fear. He's a God of love. Yes, we should fear Him with a reverent fear. But don't be so afraid that you can't uh, get out of your home because you fear the, the sky is falling on you. Allow the Lord to bless you today and realize that one of these days it will be over and we will go home to be with Him. Will it be tomorrow at the time of the eclipse? I don't have a clue. I, I believe that it's going to be when the Lord says, come up hither and we're going to go. But whenever it is, I, I pray for you that you'll be ready. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Back over to you, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you, Reverend George Vestine. Jesus paid it all ministries with Evangelist George Vestine. If you'd like to get in touch with uh, Evangelist George Vestine, you may call him at 740 357 8594. WTAV, Tabor City, North Carolina.